for joining us here on Sunrise Bright and Early. Let's get you going with your forecast. It's right? dark out there, Nina. <laughs> it's dark and early. Shocking. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, we do have a weak system pushing inland this morning. You see the rain uh, along the coast. So far, not into I-5, but see this kind of salmon tone? That is preset moving into areas where the ground temperature is 32. And we'll be getting some areas reporting some freezing rain this morning. So we'll keep an eye on that. We don't think we have enough moisture long enough to produce any big issues. But especially if you live on the west side, Yamhill County, Washington County, out into Polk County, look for some freezing rain to start your day. 38 uh, in Portland right now, so clearly that's not an issue. But rain, icy showers and spots, 8 o'clock this morning. By noon, the rest of the day is mainly dry and mostly cloudy. 44 at lunchtime and 47 today's high temperature. All right, more from Rod coming up here in a few minutes, but right now we're going to start our news headlines this hour out in Washington County. Search and rescue efforts are scheduled to resume near the town of Banks after several reports on Sunday evening of a down plane close to where highways 26 and 47 come together. The Washington County Sheriff's Office says they received one report from someone who says they actually saw a plane spiraling out of control, followed by a loud boom and a plume of black smoke. There were other reports in the area last night, people who said they heard an explosion as well. Sheriff's deputies began searching this area. Again, we're talking about right around where Highway 26 and Highway 47 come together, but they say they couldn't find any evidence of a crash, and they also say there are no reports right now of a missing plane in the area. Well, right now, the search area is so it's too large, especially with the dark and the limited information we have. We know or we believe that this happened somewhere west of Highway 47 between Highway 26 and Highway 6. So that's a large area. We've had sightings from Helvetia all the way to Timber. So we've had a wide range of people that have reported they saw this. The Coast Guard also joined the search last night. Now we're not sure what time crews plan to start looking again this morning, but if you saw or heard anything that you think might help this effort, you should call the Washington County Sheriff's Office. Now to the pandemic and the spread of COVID-19. It is having a big impact on schools again. Multiple schools in our area are either closed or they're switching back to remote learning. And Oregon leaders say they do expect more schools to switch to remote learning in the future. KGW's Devin Haskins is joining us live in the newsroom this morning. Devin, I guess simply put, there just are not enough teachers. Yeah, good morning, Brenda. That's correct. Too many teachers and students are sick, and really, there just aren't enough subs to fill all these vacancies. We've been told of three individual schools closing altogether, as well as every Park Rose school in the Park Rose District also closing. Now, here are the schools that are closed today. Durham Elementary and the Tiger Tualatin School District will not open today while the staff prepares for remote learning. Now, same with Ockley Green Middle School. That's in Portland Public Schools. That school will move to remote learning the rest of the week. And on Sunday, Park Rose School says all their schools will be closed today due to staff shortages. They'll reassess uh, again for tomorrow. Now, Portland's uh, Roosevelt, Cleveland and McDaniel High Schools in Portland have all gone back to remote learning. And again, staff being sick and a lack of available subs is a huge cause. For instance, in Portland on Friday, more than 400 subs were requested district wide, but only 60% of those were filled. Uh, I don't think anybody in the broader community is going to be surprised that unless um, the conditions improve, uh, and we can guarantee consistency of staffing that there may be additional school communities where we need to transition temporarily to, to distance learning. Portland Public Schools also said they are going back to stricter COVID safety protocols. For instance, for next month, that includes uh, student athletes wearing masks at all times during their games. Back to you guys. All right, Devin Haskins reporting live in our newsroom this morning. Restaurants around the area are also feeling the impact of this latest surge in COVID cases. The 1905 Jazz Club is one example. It's in North Portland, one of many businesses forced to temporarily shut things down because of positive COVID cases among its employees. The Jazz Club told us they were already struggling to fill positions even before this wave of COVID cases hit. Now the people running the club say their priority is safety. It has to be. I mean, we can't operate if we don't have a staff and we can't operate if we don't have customers. So doing everything we can to protect both sides of that. Same with musicians. If musicians are sick, they're not going to be able to play or if they feel that they're at risk of getting sick because our protocols don't protect them. So it's really it's for the benefit of everyone here. That was one of the co-owners of the 1905 Jazz Club who also told us they hope to reopen on Wednesday. 
Well, starting today, TriMet is scaling back services due to what they're calling a historic staffing shortage. 20 lines will have fewer buses running. Most will see buses starting later in the morning and service will end earlier in the day. TriMet says ridership remains about 50% of pre-pandemic numbers, but they're still short 45 bus operators. TriMet says riders should head to the website to check the new schedules before heading out this morning. We're working to learn more details after a Vancouver police officer shot and killed a suspect yesterday morning. Officers went to a home near Northeast 131st Avenue and 59th Street just before 1230 to check out reports of a man with a weapon. They say he was armed with knives inside the house and several people, including two kids, were hiding in a back bedroom. It's believed the suspect also set a small fire at the house. Officers say they did smell smoke when they arrived and they found the suspect outside carrying a knife. When de-escalation techniques failed, police say they were forced to use their guns. The suspect was taken to the hospital where he died. Police say the four officers involved in this are now on leave during the investigation. There's a new Oregon law in effect here in the new year. It requires death reports to note whether people were homeless when they died. Multnomah County has been doing this already for the past 10 years, and now other counties in Oregon will do it as well. Lincoln County on the coast will take note of the death of Walter Herger. Walter died outside on January 5th in Lincoln City after leaving a warming shelter that closed once temperatures got above 40 degrees. Walter spent most of his time in Newport, where he was well known by a lot of people in the community. He was a fisherman, but he also had struggles that made him homeless, according to the nonprofit Grace Winds Haven. That's a homeless organization there in Newport. Tracy Flowers is the executive director. She says many people will miss Walter. I couldn't believe the response that we got hundreds of people between my personal page and my business page. Um, just talking about memories of Walter, um, being an artist, being, um, being a friend to everybody, sharing a meal with him, sharing a cup of coffee with him, hearing his jokes, um, and just the love and compassion that this man had. Walter Hergert leaves behind a brother, other family members, and friends. Well, a new survey by the Oregon Values and Belief Center shows 70% of Oregonians think it's important or urgent for community leaders to make homelessness their number one priority. That's up 20 points from 2020. The largest jump was seen for the urgent rating, which increased from 22% of people to 39% of people in one year. The survey also found 12% of Oregonians are somewhat or very satisfied with homeless services in our area. 67% of those polled were not very or not at all satisfied. That includes 82% of people in Multnomah County. A potential strike looming now in Portland. The District Council of Trade Unions could give notice of a strike as soon as today. Union supporters rallied outside City Hall this weekend. The group has been working with the city on a new contract for its 1,200 city employees in six different unions. Last month, it declared an impasse in the bargaining process. Now, workers could strike as early as this month. We absolutely have provided critical services to the city. We've continued to keep the city working throughout, uh, well, a worldwide pandemic. You know, whether that's clean water, sewer systems, transportation, all of the many things that we do, we've continued to do. And it's time for city council to realize the value of their workforce. The city is offering a 1.6% cost of living increase retroactive to last July. It's also offering a 5% raise that would begin in July of this year. The union, though, argues those offers are not in line with national inflation rates, which increased by more than 6% in the last year. Lawmakers in Washington will kick off the new legislative session today. And just like last year, the pandemic will force a lot of those lawmakers to work from home. For anyone who is working at the Capitol during the 60 day session, testing, masking and distancing rules will all be in effect. In the House, only up to five vaccinated lawmakers will be allowed on the floor at a single time. And in the Senate, 15 lawmakers can be on the floor. Now, they don't have to provide vaccine status, but they do have to have a negative COVID test and all committee hearings will also be done remotely. 
All right, let's get to our weather forecast. Rod Hill in the Weather Center. What's on tap for today? Good morning. Uh, you know, it's one of those days where we have a little system coming in, producing some rain, no big deal. But then you go, wait a minute. Some spots are at 32 degrees, so we're on guard for the potential of some freezing rain spots early this morning before those surface temperatures warm up a bit. So here's the radar. This is a weak system, rain up and down the Oregon coast. In fact, last week I didn't think the system would do anything, but clearly it's a little uh, punchier than expected a few days ago. So we have solid rain at the coast right now, and these salmon colors uh, mixing on the radar on the leading edge, that's the rain moving into some freezing spots where there is likely some freezing rain occurring. Uh, not everywhere. Forest Grove's at 37, but there's Hillsboro 32. And if we move down right now, I'm mainly looking at the west side because that's where the moisture is, is hitting first. There's Corvallis and there's Dallas 31 and 31. McMinnville right now at the airport is a little bit above. So you get the idea. Yeah, some areas probably some freezing rain to start today. Uh, Salem 33, PDX 38, Kelso's 38. It is mid 20s out in the gorge. Any moisture that makes it into the Hood River Valley today would be freezing rain, but I'm not sure the system is strong enough to throw moisture much past Troutdale where east winds are blowing to 35 and that tends to dry up moisture uh, as well. All right, so temperatures in the gorge today. I tell you what, Hood River, we just can't get rid of that cold weather that's settled in the valley. Another day where your high will only be around freezing. East winds on the west end of the gorge gusting to about 35 miles per hour. In the valley, after that chilly start, the flirtation of some icy weather. Look at the highs today, 48 uh, Corvallis, 47 in Salem, 45 up in McMinnville. Uh, shower chance continues tomorrow. Notice today is the only day that I expect to stay shy of 50 as we're all of a sudden kind of warming up. Is it hot in here? Well, not quite yet. <laughs> yeah, not quite, but we're inching in the right direction. Thank you, Rod. A pile of rubble with a new purpose. Coming up this morning, the training search and rescue teams are doing at the now demolished Reeser Stadium. And it's a word that's flying around social media right now. I'm sure you've seen it. It's fluorona. It is not a hybrid infection. We explain what it actually means after the break.